What's up, everybody? Today, I want to do blind versus blind. Uh, poker coaching member asked me for that. And uh, I also think like uh, I can improve in this area. So let's do it. So we went from the small blind, we lent with this hand. Now we're on the flop. What would you, you guys do here? I know what I'd do, but I bet the solver doesn't agree. I'd probably just lead out a donk bet because Why? I don't want to call with king high. So I'm just looking for high. an auto. I'm looking for an auto fold. Yeah. But the problem is... Because I'm never, I'm, never, I'm never calling a bet, Louis, because our hand can't really improve unless we think we got... Unless we think king high is good here, which a lot of the time, even if it is, he's got so many cards he can redraw. So I'll just go for a donk bet and t hope to take it down. I'm not calling a bet. Okay. I don't think I don't think the board's dry enough to call a bet because you know well, any the spade. Here, Barry, is that we limp, right? And when we limp, yes, it is. We limp like uh, we limp a pretty big range, right? Like insanely big, right? So yeah. We limp almost any two cards. And then but if, I think we need to lead with some. Say you check, okay? And then he bets small. Uh, um, you're going to have to call with something else. Mm -hmm. All right, that's just how it works. Uh, you have to find calls with king eyes. Like it's, it's calling uh, king six off, king five off half of the time, king four off. The suited version, well, the clubs can fold a little bit, but it's still 50-50, you know? Uh, the rule of yeah. thumb here is, like, you're going to call one bet. So it's not that bad, right? I we're think just it's not... calling one bet, and then we're trying to reach showdown. I think what the accented gentleman said was very good for small stakes. I use it all the time. People don't raise their trash enough when they are checked to in the big blind. Like that's such a common thing. Yeah, that's right. What, but think of it this way. What does the big blinds range look like right now? He doesn't have his best hands that raise us and he has all of his worst hands, right? That's just got out there and, and got to check, right? Like people aren't raising by the same mentality People aren't raising 8-4 offsuit on the big blind when they're limp to. Which they should be. And which they should is. be. But the, the mentality that you're using is that they're, they're not. Right. So they're still there with all kinds of trash. Yep. So I, I just check and King High is like, when I want to bet from out of position, I want to be equity driven. So I'm going to bet some straight draws here, some flush draws here, even a single spade that's above 10, I'm going to bet. I'm going to bet every hand that contains the jack, queen, king, or ace of spades. Uh, yeah, every, just because every, every single spade, that's great. So yeah, like I'm going to bet king, king five with the king of spades, right? I'm going to bet king five off here, but king five of clubs, it doesn't have equity here, so it's it's just to me a, a, a bluff catcher. But it's yeah. high enough up that I think I can defend it a bit. Yeah. So this is always a check. There's a small there's a small element of betting there as well, Louis. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty three percent. So why do you think this is a good bet there? I just think it's better than calling a lot of king highs on the on a board like that where it's straight and flush heavy. Like I would rather bet um check it on a board that wasn't as draw heavy. It might be the wrong strategy though. All right, so calling returns four chips. Okay. If you lead out with it.
it returns 0 0.4 chips. Right. When you say it's, it, I'd rather bet than call, it's not true at all. It's 10 times okay. better to call with it. Okay. Really? What about um, king five with the king of spades there? What's the chip return on that leading out? Well, blocks calls, which is nice. Point six. Okay, so that's a seven little. Chips. Yeah, it's a little small, but. Yeah. Because that's that's a lot of my strategy, to be honest. That uh, likes calling more more often than not. Then. Yeah. With, with better. even the king five. But see here, Shooting. it's better to lead with it than to check call or check raise with it because it yeah. returns more chips. Yeah, because you get the auto folds and you have equity for when you get called. Also, whenever it's a, the spot is closed like this, like here, check calling or check raising, it returns 0 0.35 and leading ourselves with it returns 0 0.6 0 .6 or 0 0.7. But say it was the same, okay? So if it was even, but then our opponent just overfolds a little bit to our bet, just a couple of percentage, then this bet is printed. Well, and I mean, it's only a three chip pot. So returning 0.6 of a chip is pretty good deal. Yeah. Um, check it. Yeah. I'm checking here. What would you guys do? I think I think we should check, yeah. I still have King I still with that showdown. He bets two. Larry, what do you want to do? I'm just gonna fold out here in game. Why? Uh I just don't think we're calling to really, uh, we're only really calling to either win at showdown with King High or to hit a King. So I'm just going to get out of it, out of position. You said exactly the reason why we should call. We can I'm have the King. king. Five. Well, no, but I'll, I'll just better, out of better kings. Yeah. I don't know about that, guys, because it's still the same idea, right? It's still like we need to call with King I on over one street. I think you, yeah, call. okay. Okay. We don't have, I guess we don't really have better kings because we're gonna bet King Jack, King Queen. We, we have, have already raised we're gonna that King probably. Eight. We're gonna bet King Seven, probably. We're gonna bet oh, yeah, I guess just, I guess eight. we gotta call this. Oh, you're a calling station, oh. Ken. Well, you talk to me, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Now, you tried to sell it, Louis, by saying this is a one street cool hand. Yeah, and we, we've sure. kind of bought it. Yeah, because uh, I have <laughs> a simplification in my mind that just says we can call her. Yeah, he's uh, he sized up to the bigger bet. I think if you change that to a uh, one bet. I think it might make it into the calling range. All right. And then let's see. So we don't really we need to call the size to his bet because he size up. Yeah, I'll bet. Yeah, I think we do because of the size up. Yeah. Yeah. So we can, because he's polarized, we can be more uh, able to fold. Yeah. So Pete is spot on. Uh, it's because of his size. If you bet one big line, we're mostly continuing one street with King I. Uh, the clubs are mostly folding, though. The flop we're folding. Uh, the flop we check, check, check. Okay, so we call here. And then we check. Now it's, we're in no man's land now. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it wasn't perfect. It was good. 
We shouldn't have uh, got out on the turn, though. No. Wow, it was a blunder, Jesus. Yeah, that call. We on have the any turn leads on that good. river with the five? I did not uh, think so. Nah. No dark bed bluffs. When no man's land. What what five was it? Uh, uh, well, we had a five of clubs. There was no five on a river. It was a uh, it was a two. It was a four two run out. So I was wondering yeah. if we dock any five X as no clubs. clubs. Yeah. No hard. See, Louis, you tried to sell us this one street call on the town. Now you give us a blunder. Yeah. <laughs> no bluffs. So seven five. We shouldn't be calling this big bet much. But it seems to me like if we have a five in our hand, the bluff combo. And then yeah, we we're have seven a five. five, eight five, <coughs> five six. Jack five. Yeah, worst five because King High King Five is our best five, so it shows down well. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Jack five, the Jack block, Jack ten, block Jack nine, and blocks the straight with the five. So and yeah. behind this ball. There's All not right. many bluffs. So stack that really. is gonna change. And then uh, yeah, position should change as well. I limp. This is this is a limp. Limp jam. I don't think it jams his stack step. Are we ready? 20, we 20 25, yeah. I mean, I think it mixes actually call and raise. I limp here a lot. And I would I'll limp jam. as well. I, I limp jam. I limp, I limp for sure. All right. I think we jammed 25. Oh, that sucks. I always hate myself when that happens. Why? I don't mind this. I'm, I'm check calling all the way. Oh my No, goodness. we don't bet. We don't see, bet. Barry, no. you want to bet when you don't have anything, and when you have something, you don't want to bet. That's not our work. I work the exact opposite. I'm not betting here. Either. Yeah, but this the strategy with a small pocket bear here is to check call. Sure, but this is not any pocket pair, right? We can double barrel on a deuce, on a four, on a five. And we kind of can get value from like the random high cards that are going to peel like Jack 10. So I see a lot of merit in betting here. So for me, it's a pure bet. I'm checking. Are you going to be pol polarized and use a big betting size here, Louis? No, I'm starting one big one. So 32 but pieces of five. You're going to price them into float, like all kinds of stuff in position. Yeah, but he's still folding some. And when he floats, I get value when he miss. Okay. I'm not trying to I'm do checking. a very big pot, but I have a bit of equity to it. I'm going to follow it. Yeah. He logs it. That's the small bet, Louis. One big line. Okay. Now, now we're called, and this king is, I'm not very happy here. So, if I had doses, I would consider stacking up, <laughs> but not with fives. Just check. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> call the flop, he called the flop up, so he has some kind of equity. And now the king, I think, is really good for him. I don't think he would bet the queen like this here, but I think he just has no. Jack 10. Yeah, or, or like King Queen. Yeah, or some, some two pair. Three flop, so he probably has Jack 10 or like King 7, some stuff like that. So I'm folding him. Yeah. Show Showdown, what does he have? Oh my god. So it like so it liked the bet. It, it liked to bet with the fives because you think it more because of the straight interaction then Louis on the flop, you think? 
No, just because we have equity. For me, the small right. line, we are equity driven in our strategy. We play kind of very straightforwardly, but we have a lot of bluffs that have equity. Okay. I take it you're sizing up if a two or four or a six comes on the turn. No, because an ace is not folding. You don't want to build. Well, you carry on betting small. Okay. I would. I He's would bet small again, one third. Just okay. trying to high roll for cheap. Uh, Three. Yeah, this is a a twelve big blinds. No. Oh, it's twelve. Fuck. Uh, I'm folding. It's never gonna be a fold. Yeah, it's pretty pretty close, right? Is is a ten three gonna be a fold? Yes. Yeah. Right. This is bottom of range. So. Yes, but I'm gonna I go. bottom is like yeah. ten four. Just fold. You get the bottom. Ten five yeah. is the bottom. So I mean, if we limp, we never make a mistake here. We're mostly all in, or we have some limps. Like, but uh, I don't think this wants to do either. So I think this is a fault. I'm folding. It's a fold. This is one of our worst hands. We don't even limp this, I don't think. I don't because think we're even, we're going to, you don't. No, it's either a raise or an all in, but I feel bad to go all in here. Yeah. It's definitely not, it's definitely not a raise, Louis. Why not? So it could be, you might be right. You might be right about the all in, though. In my mind, this part of the deck, Benefits from getting in stuff old. Easy jam. Easy jam, just old. All right. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a bummer. It limps a lot. Wow. I, I, I don't play this in. It's in Me the, neither. Uh... All right. Change rules. No. Oh. I don't play it. This must be our worst limping range. No, I actually opened it up. We limp worse 10 still. Do we save the blunder when we change moves? Looks we limp like we down. Did. We start mix fold. We start mixing folds with 10 4 off. It's fucking crazy. What about nines? Uh, what nines are we limping with? Nines five start mixing folds. Oh, that's suited. Okay. okay. My bad. Uh, uh, just go all in. No. <laughs> One big blind. I think so. But this, yeah, this okay. end uh, definitely get value from a check raise here. He should have a lot of bluffs, and we're never escaping. No. Oh, yeah, it liked to check too, didn't it? Obviously, yeah. to raise. Now I would bet. Either five all in. or sixty-six percent. I'm going all in. I, I dodged one bullet on the turn. I'm done. I'm all in. Okay. We, we the thing is, the thing is, he, he called one. Line. He's really, really wide. Okay, he limped back. Yeah, but he has. He could. He could also have a better ten or a two because there's no that. draw. There's no draws. He's calling with here. Yeah, if he so has the only ten, other hand, if he has a better ten or a two, we're gonna. Be I don't screwed. want him to call. That's the point. Yeah, yeah, we want, we want this money. We have our best that's value. Really not a good way to approach it, Ken, because you need him to pay with the worst hand. So I'm envisioning that we're short stacked, deep in a tournament. I want to clean up my equity as fast as possible here and take the five big blinds we got. Yeah, that's not good. And I win 33%. My stack increased by 33%. I'm pretty happy. Yeah, but that's not optimal. That's one of your leaks. But with yeah, the SPR, with the yeah. low SPR, which was about three, are you not committed to the top pair anyway? SPR yeah. is two here. You two, are yeah. definitely yeah. super committed to the top pair. Yeah. So you're not we're not getting away market. whether he's got, if he's got a bigger 10 or two, we, we, we stack off. That's yeah. what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to bet 33% and try and keep him in with lots of stuff. Try and, and keep him in with all the pairs under 10. Try and keep them in with every spade. I like squeeze, squeezing the juice here a little bit, milking the cow a little bit. 
So I'm going to go 66 first. I'm torn between pot, but pot seems excessive blind versus blind. So I'm always going 66% here. That's true. You're not, you're not setting up a good river jam size, though. Yeah. The solver doesn't work like that. Okay. Down a little bit. It's just gonna bet according to whatever, like. It, I yeah. think it's gonna go thirty-three. Oh. Check. Check. Oh. Why a check? Because is that, is that because of the call? all the EVs are the same. The villain's range is yeah. so wide that you you're gonna return more by catching him bluffing than you are going to get by him calling your bet. The EV is worth it one tenth of a chip no matter what action you took there. Yeah. When we bet, and particularly when we bet polarized, like when we bet big, <coughs> only going to get called by his hands that have value to continue. Which is why it wants to bet small to keep in like pocket threes wants to call there. Versus a small bet. Yeah. Um. Uh, Although you you said that, um, Peter, but I don't think his threes are in his range there. He's already jammed oh, yeah. those. Yeah. Sorry, but uh, if he turned to five, for example. All right. So the most dominant bet size is sixty-six percent. So my guess was kind of right. But the hand we have is not good enough. What do we have? 10, 6, 10, 5? 10, 6, 10, 6, 10, 6. I think it's because when he calls you on that flop, there's no draws there. So he, he, he either has a better 10 or 2, or he's just calling you with an ace high for showdown or something. Or a, you know, he's, he's already jammed his middle pairs an ace high. So I think if he's calling on that flop, it's dodgy. You see how wide he calls her, man. No, what I'm saying is, Louis, when we when when we check, when we bet that donk bet and he calls, yeah, I don't think he's got any, I don't think he's got any small pairs in his range. And he probably hasn't got ace high because he probably would have jammed us when we limped. So all the yeah. small pairs jammed. Yeah, so. but do you look at all the greens here, Barry? That's going to be his flop strategy against our deck. So he yeah, but like, there's a lot of better tens. Yeah, but there's and, Jack and There's Jack A. And he has he all the twos. But there's so many hands that break. That he, what, that he has to call with? That he, yeah, like he has to flop bet with. He has to defend right. a third of his range, right? What's so like, when you bet two thirds? So like your perception is a narrow and linear range, but in reality... He's wide left like a drop here. And there's a lot of hands you get value from, even though like our hand is not a bad. I mean, look at this, right? And also no one is gonna call that, right? They're, they're, everyone's gonna overfold because this is just like madness, right? Call 70% 70, 70 of range, 75%, yeah. No it's way. A lot, right? Yeah, so we're not facing a tight, tight linear range here. That's super loose. How I don't know how he can call with some of those jacks that, that are in that matrix. Because he checks back on the flop, so he takes the flop with any two cards. So post flop, he has to deal with a range construction that is any two, and then you know. He has to deal with it. Yeah, there he floated oh, right. I'll see. two undercards. Yeah, sorry. I just realized he checked back on the flop. I, I, I didn't, we didn't bet. We checked the flop, didn't we? Uh, yeah. We bet on the flop. Old. Yeah. We bet the flop, and he called with two undercards to the top pair. Like, that's how wide his range is. Yeah, that's what we're trying right. to say. Because in your mind, when he calls the flop, He's now like nothing. Is anyone else finding those calls with two undercards there? No. Nope. Well, <laughs> me and Ken, probably. I'm not calling. <laughs> it depends on what day. Ken, you, 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 you Ken's think. never calling there. Ken's never calling there with two I undercards. Have overcard. I would have. I would call it one overcard, though. Yeah, yeah maybe. 
I'm gonna find Jack eight, but I'm not gonna find nine eight. No, me either. This is a fold. Yeah, that's a dog. The nuts. What is it doing? It's waiting for all the other positions to fold. I'm limping. Slim. Yeah. I'm checking. Oh, this one, this one's gonna be very equity driven. Backdoor flush, backdoor wheel, backdoor Broadway, and mm. value with high. I like to pocket troll. I can comfortably check call a lot of bets here. So uh, we got a lot of cards that we can improve on. So I like to play passively, actually, at a position blind versus blind. I don't want to play. I try not to want to play big pots. Well, look at this, sir. This is the kind of flub we're going to bet a lot on. Yeah, we have a lot of nut advantage because he doesn't have he has a lot of kings and queens that want to raise pre-flop. He's gonna be missing some of his best hands. So our exact hand does check a bit more than bet though, right? It's fine. Yeah, yeah. But the yeah. value here I see with betting the wheels that we get him off better his side, even though he doesn't have that many because he's checking on the flop. We can get rid of what he has. Uh, like ace jack's not folding, ace ten's not folding. Obviously, ace queen, ace king, he's never having them, but they're not folding. I don't know if ace nine folds much. Ace ten, uh, no, I mean ace seven, ace six. Yeah, I mean ace eight. Eight. Without the backdoor flush, the clubs. Also, with two over cards, like now he's starting to fold nine eight off, right? So what do you guys want to do? Okay. I mean, this sucks. I'm checking. Yeah. We didn't pick up equity, so check. This is a big bet. Ooh. I think we, I think we, this is an exploit here. We, I think we fold out to this size. I mean, I'm gonna, I have a, I'm gonna just call with my hearts here. I'm out with spades. I'm done. I'm gone. You can have it. I think if he bets one, we call Louis, like you were saying earlier. That's right. Yeah, yeah look at that bastard. <laughs> the power of position. Well, when we check twice, you can almost guarantee we haven't got it. A lot of the time that we haven't got any real value hand. He probably bluffs out if we go bet check too. Yeah. But he might fold that flop. Like that's super oh, yeah, disconnected. Yeah, right. Right, 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 right. He's fold, he's probably folding the flop. So that's really good for me. I just picked up something very, very big because I would float one street. My my perception was that most of my size and king eyes need to float one street against one, uh, basically one street, but any value. Whereas yeah, it's just, in reality, it's value, value driven. If you size up, it's just so hard to win out of position. This mixes. This is one of my hands I mix. So like you can do either or here, raise or fall. I'm always limping. <laughs> I'm always limping right now because, like people, like uh, Chesto said, uh, people don't they don't isolate their the the uh, often enough from the bottom big line. Like people, they call too often pre flop, and they don't bluff often enough. They're not aggressive enough. You can fold now. I um. But you get, uh, I actually, uh, go in your HUD. I mean, I make, when I raise first in from the small blind, I'm making, I forget what it was, 150 big blinds per hundred or something. So 
I randomize. Well, I randomize my offsuit shit and some of my like low, high, low suited uh, hands to force me to open more because I was way over limping. And then I don't know, several months ago, I started just to randomize uh, the small blind and big blind actually when it's blind versus blind, and uh, it's helped. It forces me to play open pots uh, with the raise with more hands. I mean, it's great when you just take it down with a hand like that. Now, the problem here is, as I thought, we're going to have other type of combos I want to fold. And like 8-7 is too good to fold. Yeah. <clears throat> it's the bottom of our range, but it, it is it's too good. Yeah. It's, okay. it's our best, it's our worst off-suit combos, these yeah. ones. Yeah. The off-suit sevens, mostly. We can fold a couple of suited stuff. Well, let's see. That's, that's not like that in our range. We're folding, let me see. We're folding. Uh, we're folding much more. Like, we're not, in our rages, we're not defending... We're basically folding eight seven off, nine seven off, ten seven off, jack seven off, queen seven off, folding like fifty percent. So we're way, uh, and then we're not calling like nine four suited, nine three suited, seven three suited. Yeah, at what stack depth are you looking? Twenty five. Well, you know, it's not surprising because all the salt the sims have different solutions, but it should not be far off from this. Yeah, so like when it's close, I don't know, again, we're out of position. I'd rather just give the fucking hand up. Yeah, so I don't have plenty of fives there. I just have plenty of 30. Yeah, it's Perfect. also like all of your offsuit stuff, you're going to realize it's equity a lot poorer. And so that's where a lot of your folds are coming from. So it's okay to overfold on the offsuit side and defend more on the, the suited side. For sure. Cool. Oh, oh, yeah. And uh, we, I'll think. Right. I thought of that stack death were playing less low connected hands anyway. Yeah, blind against blind, I guess, because it's wider wider uh wider ranges. Yeah. I guess we have to defend a bit wider. Now these poker coaching ranges might be facing a 3.5x raise, and I think the wizard went to three, so that could be part of it. Yeah, definitely. I don't really know what our ranges are on poker coaching, what size they use in that spot. Just guessing. And so how do we have a skin here? Or what we do? So. Um it's going to limp some, apparently, and then just yeah. the limp jam hand. Yeah, I think so. I'll go back to open. We don't have it that often. It's it's showing like 100% here, but we're probably only going to have it like whatever, 15%, 30%. I don't know. Let's see. All our middle pairs are limp jams. All blind raise first, and we have ace king. We have it 20, uh, I can barely see, 20, 25% of the time we limp it. So it's going to limp jam when we have it. Also, here it's going all in, but this is not all in. It's just raising. Again. There's zero. Uh, no, there is. There is. This is pre-flop still? Yeah. yeah. All right, interesting. Now we have a seven of spade here. But yeah, I'm going. <laughs> I'm okay with betting small or checking. One of the two. I think we check and give up, is what I think. 
Well, he doesn't have uh, – he's going to go all in with a lot of stuff that's hitting this board, right? Well, he's the one. Uh, I can't he's talk about the sun. I'm giving up. I can't get. I can't. I'm giving up for sure on this one. Fucking get out of line. With we have team. to. We have to check and see what his bet size is. I like betting here because we have the seven of spades. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it didn't a, mind it, Louis. I guess that bet it didn't it mind it. Hold, so it's like not good. Now with the spade and the heart, we get to lose our mind. Here? Yeah. Walking both fresh draws? I don't know, man. I'm just uh, not going to do it. I don't think it's good. Mm. But if you want to do it, tell me the number and tell me why. So we block the value continues of both the flush draws. Um, so I think in, in this size, when we turn... I, I guess maybe our hand isn't strong enough on the equity side. The blockers aren't going to be good enough because his range is too wide. He's going to have too many auto or, calls. True. But also, he has the range and not advantage here for 100%. If we, had, if we had the jack of spades or the 10 of spades instead of the uh, seven of spades, I think this would be a bluff. Yeah. Blocking the straight and both flushes. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, yeah. the thing is look it does good. does have a bit of size up too at 45. But we found the optimal. <laughs> That's a good thing. We found the optimal. Uh, we just have the check flop. What did the flop do? Check, 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 check. Uh I guess we gotta go all in a Star Wars thing. Uh, not well. all in. We gotta <laughs> go. Like, hold on, not all in. Uh, no way. Eh. We give up. Three X pot. Sure, why not? What? Are you mad? So, I, I think forty three percent just gets some auto folds that are going to that were that are going to beat us. CLP, this is why I can't play these hands. It's better for me to fold pre-flop. I understand yeah. now. 43 by <laughs> 10, you want me? Yeah, we're ditching it. That's right. Wow. Hey. We're just gonna we're just gonna get some auto folds that have us beat. Right? He's gonna okay. fold a the uh, deuce here. He's gonna fold pocket sevens here. So you're but just for, gunning for, for a- what it's worth, 150% is the best EV. No, it's a low frequency. Yeah, well. What was that bet size on the river we made? Oh, he called us with pocket sixes. That was a half pocket. That's the only pocket pair he flats pre-flop. He raises every other pair, I think, except sixes. Mm. All in, basically. He's going to raise his best pairs and jam his worst. Uh, this is going to be a limp, isn't it? Yeah. Not me. Oh. I'm sure I know. it is. I'm sure it is. I haven't me. been... I've been folding in these spots, but I know the solver's going to say that we should limp this. For sure. Well, it's going to mix. If it was limping with queen 10, queen 10, 6, it's going to limp queen 5. Yeah. It's going to split. He could be sitting there with four or three, you know. It's going to raise or fall or call. I mean, EV's the same. Yep, it's all okay. It's so hard to play out of position. It's nice to find the raises if you're going to play these hands, honestly. Because now when you get an ace high flop, like he's devoid of all the best aces, you can see that much easier here and take pots and shit, you know. What's our raise size at this stack depth? I go two. I go two point seven under thirty and three point five over thirty. So you go three point five over thirty, Ken. Two point seven under. That's what I do. Anyone else? 
I think a lot of, I think sixes uh, and toe always said, I think they said three all the time, but I don't think three is effective enough. I'm, I'm 3.2 over 30. What about under 30? What about at his stack depth, Peter? 2.5. Wow, this, yeah, this is that's close what enough. I would... Like, this is close enough. I would even think about sizing up, but yeah. I would normally go 2.5 at this stack depth, whether that's correct or not. I don't know. I never fall to it. Like, I don't fold any hands 2.5 that I would. Uh, what do you do here? Call for like two, two, two point two, 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 you know what I mean? Like 2.5. I think, whatever. I think we check call one blind, Louie. Log your notes. Yeah, this one has a little bit of leads because it has the backdoor Broadway and the backdoor wheel. If you had, I think if you had the Queen of Spades, you'd be more likely to, to lead here too. Why call? And here it is, Louis. Here it is, Louis. <laughs> we yeah, have not... to call this. I guess, but I don't understand it. But... In your notes, we call we call one blind here. We've got you know we've got queen high, and we've got some backdoor equity, straight equity, top and bottom. Yeah, it's an easy call. I call just because they have so many bluffs. I force myself to call one here, and usually in the fold and turns. But you got to make them put the two bets in. Some people don't have it at them. We found it anyway. We found the call this time. So, yeah, I don't really call with Queen I. But I guess that's another adjustment I should do. Let's see yeah, what the betting range is supposed to be. The Queen of Spades queen here wants mm. to raise and raise big sometimes, too. Like, I remember when I said sometimes we're going to lead here if that Queen is the Queen of Spades. It also check raises here with the Queen of Spades. What? On low frequency. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot of backdoor equity, really, isn't it? Because then what's we've the, got a good flush draw. What's the big buying bet when we check? I'm blocking the flush draw, I should say. This is it. Okay. So, I ain't only betting 48%. But he's betting, like, everything a little bit, right? Yeah. <clears throat> that's interesting maybe i should start randomizing bluffs like that too in them spots like all right just like just my garbage just like rolling if it's over under like 30 percent or something just fucking bet should, should we leave here no nope no i don't think so Hmm. Interesting, but I think we probably just got to go sh for showdown value with a yeah, queen yeah, high now. Right? Try to go to showdown too. I think. I think that's not good because we can get king eyes to fold. We can get better queen eyes to fold. Um. Yeah, like uh, weak ace ain't gonna fold. A ten's not gonna fold. If you somehow hit a six on the river, that's probably not gonna fold. Yeah, sure. You get called by ace, ten, and six. Sure. Everything that else should fold. We also oh, so we're getting better to fold. Yeah. We're getting worse to fold. We're getting some kings to fold, right? Okay, so that's not enough. It's too narrow. Just king high is too narrow of a target, I think. Better queen? Yeah, I'll think so. And a deuce? A deuce is my fold? Yeah, better queen? Yeah, I guess. I'm yeah, checking. So how much do we... Oh, I'm checking. <laughs> I mean, 50%. If I did bluff here, I'd go 50%, but I'm checking. Okay. I'm I'm one. checking too. I thought it was going to be 80, but I didn't want to commit chips. But yeah, I think like uh, like the turn goes check, check. And uh, we have a straight blocker. Uh, we get better queens to fold. We get better kings to fold. This is a good bet spot for sure with this part of the deck. With all the 
none like uh, the one without showdown queen five queen four king five king four all that stuff that's big that's right, a lot it's the dominated effect So see, queen five, bet's big. Queen four, bet's big. Even jack five and jack four do it. I wish these colors were similar to bio. I still try to figure out what I'm looking at here without, you like. Well, it's like, easy. Yellow is small bet. Blue is start is a big bet. And pink is a really big bet. And red is just all of it. So yellow is bet small. Oh. So we bet. So betting big to target any weaker hands. Yeah. Less than the ice, I guess. Anything less than the ice. Yeah. All the blue is big bets. Yeah. So like you're going to mix in, I guess. Now, how do you structure? What's interesting is like you're using 50 and 80. How do they, and 100. So you structure your value to bluff. You got, it's like, it's really hard to. That's why I put split ranges. Powers. That's why I put the same colors because I think these two bed sizes are very similar. So, like, what value hands are in those ranges, right? And what are the like? What are our worst hands? Put it that way. Let's find our worst hands and what size are they using? Are they matching with our best combos that are going one ten? So, what's our worst hand here? Like seven five or something? What's the yeah, board? Seven, seven, eight. Two, three. So like worst, seven, five, five, our worst hand. What size are we betting? We're not betting, right? 80%? Yeah. We're betting 80% uh, yeah. a bunch and then 110% a little bit. Yeah. Which and is then the same what as well. Like, what are we doing with like our 10X? Are they going 50%? Nothing big. So that's one of our best hands since uh, that goes check, check. Them. We don't have many aces, I guess. So yeah, we're going for value with the 10. So aces are betting the biggest? Yeah. Yeah. And we don't have, and what's our, we don't have bluffs in that size. Jack four. So offsuit stuff too. Jack four, jack four. Yeah, five, there's no five, bluffs eight, in four. that size. No, this is the dominated effect. So we bet these to fold ends that dominate us. So it's it's a pattern along. You no, know, Justin Justin Saliba has a great webinar about that. So hard to split. Also, Brock calls about it. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Perfect. He calls it the ten. Good score, but no chips. <laughs> so I would raise here. I mix, yeah. I mean, I prefer to raise his hand. It doesn't play well. Just see a flop. Okay, it's falling in love. Yeah. You have to be careful when you get deep stacked. Your value goes better with suited hands. Let's let them. Hmm. What what was stack depth for we on here? I think we're bluffing here. Are we not? Are we deeper now? Yeah, we're deeper yeah, we're, now. You have to, yeah, sixty big blinds now. I'm surprised it was a limp this a seven and not a raise pre flop. Is anyone else? No. But it, it said that was there any raising pre flop with it, Louis? Or was it just a call? 30% raise. Yeah, it makes right. Okay. But I'm bluffing. Uh, uh, yeah. If we bluff here, we get we get him off like ace eight, ace nine, maybe ace ten. So if the ace comes, it's a lot cleaner. Mm -hmm. And then we get piled on by like ace king, ace queen, ace jack. So we fold. So then we dodge a bad, a bad implied dot scenario and we get better ace to fold. So for me, it's a very good raise. More of a call. I thought it was gonna I thought it was gonna say call, but it likes raising too. 
Yeah. Same EV. Yeah. We we're supposed to continuation bet, aren't we? I think so. Uh, Why was there 25? Why is there no 33 here? Well, that's how they break down their sizes. Player type right. is what I'm waiting for. I'm trying. Well, I think we've got to, I think we've got to see bet, but yeah. This is one of the hands. No. We're in no man's land here. Are we gonna get away with it? No. Nope. I think all the doubt is that I'm uh, waving the white flag. We torched enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Yeah, you when you did you turn <laughs> Turn the relevant blocker for the value hand with the ace of spades. You got to continue barreling here. No, that's right. I didn't think about that. That is 100% right. Now it's just to give up. Oh, my God. <laughs> that hand went to shit, really, didn't it? Yeah. No pair, no draw. Well, what did it say on that flop bet when we went 25%, Louis? It, it, it liked the bigger size in all check, didn't it? No, it was 85% check. Yeah, but the, 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 the betting it did have, it was a larger size, wasn't it? Yeah. Qu quite a bit larger. I don't know. Yeah, it was the, the next two sizes up. I think it was half pot and 66 pot or whatever it is. Yeah, I think it liked the 66, didn't it? Yeah. And then when the Just two smash spades it, it'll get out of there. Past. So this is premium. I'm racing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Whoops. I mean, I'm calling. <laughs> well, nice. I think that's because if he jams, it's we're, we're in a horrible spot with a really nice hand, right? Which we don't want to call off for our whole stack. Very big. Yeah. Man, it wants to see a flop this hand, doesn't it? Yeah, I thought it was going to be in that little square here that we were going to race a lot, but no. It's, li it's limpy, limpy here. It got away. <laughs> All the all, all the queens, all the queens, they want to, they want to limp, and yeah, you want king, king ten plus. Yeah, you want to block his his jamming range. You probably see ace queen there. Okay. Yeah, most of the queens there limp at that depth, but the kings raise more from king ten up. The suited kings, suited oh, suited queens. Call suited king's raise. Yeah, you're you can raise queen jack off suit because it's easier to fold than queen jack suited, which is going to have too much equity and is going to want to rumble. Yeah, post flop, it's definitely going to want to see a flop. The offsuit stuff don't matter so much. And that's at what depth was that? That was a fairly effective. Um, this one is 30, yeah. Makes sense, makes sense. Mm, we like it. So I would check here. Yep. Me too. Check range. This is where he goes for it. Yeah. Now raise. As much as I, I want think... to raise, I think at this SPR, this hand class is a pure raise. 
My top pair, good kicker at the uh, SPR3. I mean, you're making a blunder if you don't play. But my problem here is we're blind against blind. And he's super wide. So I think it's more of a call. I think it's more of a raise with... Um, if if we're uh, if there's um, I don't know I, I, I can't, I'm, I'm joining you on the call Louis yeah that's the thing right I thought because yeah. we're kind of online uh, we kind of slow play a little bit more but at this SPR top pair top kicker we always go crazy how big's the race? Race ball? So it's three. So now looking at barreling the turn, we're pretty high in our value. I want to go big. Yeah. Do we do we continue do we play polarized here? Uh, it's not, it's not all right. It's 50% of the pack, yeah. Not, some oh. portion of our range is gonna want a bit big ace king, ace uh, no, ace queen, king queen, queen jack. Oh, uh, right. Messed up pairs are gonna want to size up for value for sure. Said, Said has just made a point. Said has just made a point of the stack to pot ratio being one. So, do we just jam? Nope, I think, I think we do. Nope. You don't think it's a thing, Louis? Never. It's too big of a bet. It's easy for him to fold like a seven or a nine, a weak nine if we jam. Whereas if we bet off putt, hmm, we're going to have to defend with every nine and some sevens. Okay. What we do is two queens and two nines, two sevens. Same thing, probably. I would uh, probably size the same, yeah, with uh, a set. Uh, betting smaller, betting a bit bigger is fine. It's mixing, checking, bet. Yeah. All right, what do you guys want to do here? I think we got to rip it. Yeah, not a lot, I guess. Definitely. I'm glad the spade didn't come. <laughs> 